<laughs> Look at all my little underwear. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> just Why correct, is that dude. It's weird? Terrible. Because I shouldn't have to miss that much spelling. It's bad. <laughs> That's adorable. I love it. Look how much you got. This is perfect. Alrighty. I'm really excited. Meg Lee Chin. Meg, wait, Meg Lee Chin. Live. This <laughs> is gonna be pretty cool. Like, mm, it's really exciting. I feel like we have gone and are going through a lot of the same stuff she went through when she totally. started like getting into totally. it. So she's like the perfect person to talk to about I'm it. I'm so excited. <clears throat> I'm just like that she even agreed, and that it's 10 p.m. over there. Like she's just. You know, oh, okay. Okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Hello. How's it going? Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm Angie. This is Johnny. So, what's your name? Uh, I'm Johnny, and this is Angie. Oh, right. Hey. Hi. It's so nice cool. to see you. Yes, I <laughs> Share my screen. Oh, let me see. Do I have We're just getting a few things figured out with the screens. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, thank you, Tom. I know I called you a little bit early. No so worries. Awesome. There we go. <laughs> All right. Perfect. All right. Um, will you be able to record this uh, yes. off the screen? Yes, I can. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh -huh. oh, my so fun. <laughs> you, where are you guys in California? Uh, Seattle, Washington. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Not California then. Okay. Cool. Yeah, Seattle, huh? Yeah. Wow. I haven't been there in years. Oh, you should come back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's time for another trip. Yeah, like, yeah I know. If, if I can ever leave London, this is the problem. Oh, you know? right. And we've got a great bad here, the coronavirus. Right. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. Yeah, so there's all kinds of yeah. areas. Stuff. Okay, we're ever gonna get free of this? Um, you know, we we've got. I, I guess because this is a really international city, mm -hmm. right? You know, right. ports and lots of traveling and stuff like that. So yeah, we've got a free. But I pretty much not. Left, I'm a big, big coward. I'm pretty much not left. <laughs> Yeah. So. I mean, we don't really go very many places. Like we're usually just together, like me and the band, and yeah, it's like we're, yeah, we just stick with each other. Okay, so you guys have got your own little oh, bubble, you, you know, oh, okay. bubble. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And, and as long as we're stuck with like other musicians, that's okay. Yes, it is. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're going right now. Okay, I think we're just finishing getting everything figured out yep and we're <laughs> going to one all right yay here we are <laughs> oh, yay. awesome meg so if you don't mind we're just gonna do an introduction um let people know who you are and um so this is uh, I'm Johnny from Atrocity Girl. I'm here with Angie. Uh, she is the drummer from Atrocity Girl, and we are here with um, Megley Chin. Uh, Megley Chin is a singer, a songwriter, an audio engineer, and a producer, and she's so much more. You were born in Taipei, Taiwan, correct? And you hail from London, England. As no, uh, I I grew up in a small town called Pembroke in oh, Massachusetts. Nice. Gotcha. Oh, wow, Perfect. Wow. I'm glad that we're touching up on this because, like, yeah, it's nice to be able to hear it from the source. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they'll be really curious with me and Pembroke if they uh, if they find out that I say that I came from London. But not. <laughs> gotcha. So um, you've been known to be in bands such as Pigface, um, Crunch, and um, Technofear. Um, you were also featured in EQ Magazine, Tape Op Magazine, and Electronic Music Magazine, which I think is just fantastic. 
Um, her tracks can be heard on um, shows such as Queer's Folk, um, Witchblade, um, and Sleeper Cell. Um, she's a self-produced. Uh, she's a self-produced engineer. <laughs> Uh, she's gained such notoriety from building her own home studio and recorded her first album, which I have to say, like, I've been a huge fan of you for so long. I absolutely love oh. your music. I just want to get off that off my chest. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so you produced your first album, Peace and Love, um, which I feel like has really, really helped put you on the map for um, women and in, in engineering and doing it themselves, which we, we want to be able to talk about that more with you. So... Um, well, yeah. it was really low tech. I mean, um, I recorded on an Atari Falcon, wow. which was, uh, cool. I had pretty much, uh, I was like the first kid on the block. Well, not really a kid, but I, I, I was one of the first to have the Atari Falcon and record on a digital studio. And it had, I mean, it's hard to believe, it had four megabytes of RAM. Dang. And um, I had a hundred megabyte hard drive, <laughs> and um, my song Utopia. I recorded that. It took so long. It was about six months of wow. um, using Atari and using the little increments and pushing notes what? back and forth. Oh my god! Before gosh. I realized, oh you know, well, you can just you can just do the take again. <laughs> oh no! <nice. laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I, I was just kind of learning, and uh, because I only had a hundred uh, megabyte hard drive, I had to sort of like record a bit, and then like chop out the audio in between, delete it, yep. yeah. and uh, I mean, you know, it wasn't like that. Yeah. Tell you. And it just it sounds so tedious, and you know, it's these things were just sort of you know becoming very prominent in the market around that time and and uh you know when sort of electronica really just started to come to life and i really commend you for that i think that's really incredible so it's kind of cool to hear how it actually happened well back in the day i think it's a lot better now because uh, mm -hmm. i'm quite yeah. old but back in the day it was um i mean it 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 was there, there were females in music but nobody really did anything technically at all. Right. And so uh, the, the computers changed my life because prior to that, um, you know, I'd been, I, I'd always been patronized in studios. You know, I'd have ideas and they'd pat me on the head. Oh, Meg, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> just go back to acting cute and, um, mm. you know, try to dress a bit here. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wait, the, the usual, yeah. you know, so um, doing doing it myself was the only way I, I could ever get a chance in the studios because they, they used to be really expensive too. Right. recording studios. I'm, uh, I'm probably the equivalent. I mean, back then, even a really cheap studio was like a few hundred quid a day. Gosh. I don't know what the equivalent would be now. Oh thousands. Yeah. I mean, they're really expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, now, everybody's got home, home studios and equipment, so um, right. it's brilliant. It's really lovely. Wow. Damn. I agree. Do you have any questions? Yeah, well, I, I was wondering, how did you, how did you come to feel the confidence to launch into it and to really decide to do it yourself? Well, I never had any confidence. It was just out of necessity. So, Years, when I first started, I went to uh, San Francisco State University, and I took an audio class by a guy called John Barsotti, really cool teacher, he might even still be there, but um, I was the only girl in the class, yeah. and uh, you know, I, I'd walk around and kind of go, ooh, you know, maybe, maybe I'll mic up this drum, and some guy would always come over and pat me on the head and go, <laughs> Let me sort this out, and I'd kind of go like, oh, I don't know. oh no, I'm the stupidest in the class. Oh, I don't know. Oh. And um, it, yeah, I know. It, it, at the end of the class, um, it, we had this classroom, and it was yellow the walls, and the lights were fluorescent. And um, I used to always fall asleep because um, oh, because the lights used to put me to sleep. Oh. And it, at the very last day. We had we all had our own private project. We were we were supposed to go in. We were supposed to mix a track on our own, you know. And um, 
So the very last day of class, he was going to play all the tracks and make his comments, yeah? Mm -hmm. So he played all the tracks, and, you know, this one's to this and this one's to that. And then he goes, well, there's one that stands out heads and tails above all the rest. And uh, so they play it, and everybody's agreeing. They're going, oh, yeah, the reverb, the way this fades out here, this is perfect. And this is just a mountain, and the kick sounds good, and blah, blah, blah. And um, so they go, yeah, okay, whose mix was that? And he looked at the box, and he and he looked away. Oh, my God. <laughs> he said, that's Meg's mix. Wow. And I was like, you know, this okay. whole time for a year, I thought I was the stupidest in the oh, class. Oh, but I was wow. the only one I swear, I was the only one who knew how to fucking mix. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, so... Um, but, it didn't really end there, you know, the, the patronizing sort of went on for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. um, I did finally, you know, I, I had to learn it all myself. I mean, my dad was an electronics engineer. We had no boys in the family. Right. And so, I, you know, I he used to give me uh, birthday presents like um, Radio Shack 101 mm -hmm. Project. He, he bought me presents when I was a kid that he actually wanted himself. Oh, you nice. know, so oh. Technology was never, uh, you know, alien to me. I never, I never really thought. Well, you know, guys, guys, guys are better at this. Yeah. I just, you know, I just. Yeah. Nice. What kind of music did you grow up on? What did you really like when you were younger? It was uh, classical music, because um, well, I wanted to be a ballet dancer. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wanted to be a ballerina. But, um, yeah, no, we, we lived in Taiwan, so, um, you know, we, we got access to a lot of uh, bootleg records. So, um, yeah, so I, I got to buy all, my own records when I was a little kid. That's pretty cool. Nice. But, yeah, most of classical music, Tchaikovsky and stuff, I, I just bought things. I, I liked the, the dresses, the ballet dresses. I, I picked the, the ones that had the, you know, the ballerinas that I liked. But uh, yeah, you know, so I didn't really end up being a ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, and sort of to follow up that question, also, uh, when did you really discover, uh, you know, the 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 industrial sound? Like, when was it that you found it, and who was it that maybe turned you on to it or introduced you to it? Well, it was probably more. I, I kind of started off liking heavy metal. Yeah. Cool. You know, yeah. I, I like bands like Zeppelin and Black Sabbath yeah. and uh, yeah. Alice Cooper and that sort of thing. So I think um, industrial is more the extension of that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably yeah. a little bit more metal than I am uh, industrial, if, if you want to really know the truth. Nice. Um, yeah. Nothing past, uh, unfortunately, nothing past <laughs> the 70s, <laughs> really. Right, right. Not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It, it definitely was a, a game changer for me when I was growing up and discovering that sound. And it's it's almost like having both the sounds of electronica and then, yeah, metal really combined together. And I loved both of those genres. So being able to discover that at, at a young age really just opened my eyes to so much and uh, appreciate it quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> but... Uh, my next question to you is, um, so you built your own studio, like what did, what was it all that you started, started out with? What it, what did it consist of? Okay. Well, the first one was the Atari Falcon. Yeah. And, uh, got a really good deal on that. Through nice. a magazine called Loot, you know, talk the guy way down cool. and, uh, cause nobody really heard of it, you know, so he couldn't really sell it. Right. So I, I was nice. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I had a digital... Uh, recording computer and then the next one after that was uh, a pc i mean i've i think it might have been something like a i think i think it was like a pentium 2 i yeah. have even been a bit of pentium i don't know i was using cubase oh, and okay. um I, I was using a, a just cheap stuff you know i didn't have a big budget a casio fz1 sampler you guys probably never even heard any of these things this is all really old stuff <laughs> cubase yeah. is still around yeah, cubase is still around exactly <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no 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 it's all really old stuff um first one was the falcon 
And then the second one was the Pentium. And uh, I was so poor, I actually had to build my own computers as well. Wow, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, I mean, we're really talking from scratch, you know. But um, I, I got to say, I kind of had a lot of the credit sort of stolen from me. <laughs> from, uh, because... One sort of well, one sort of thing about being like a female is, um, you know, when somebody finally back then, you know, I don't know what it is for you guys now, but you know, when somebody finally does take you seriously on something, you're so grateful yep. that uh, you don't bother to kind of like protect your interests. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I, I was so grateful that, you know, oh, you know, squeak, squeak, somebody's giving me a chance, you know. I don't think it'd be like that now, but but I don't know. I, I don't know what it's like for you guys. Is it still really, really sad? It's kind of similar, yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> and that's funny. That was actually kind of one of my other questions um, that I had for you was, y you know, um, throughout your career, have you found that uh, there was, you know, a lot of musicians or artists or producers or engineers that were that were doing exactly that like they were taking your ideas or they were you know discrediting you on the things that you had done or you know have you had songs stolen from you and well, well, well yeah you oh, know wow. I've, I've had uh, um i don't know i don't know if i'm allowed to talk about it i did sign a non-disclosure agreement once sure, i didn't gotcha. sign one with years <laughs> left that's the good news i learned i mean you've got these things called non-disclosure agreements True. that they use to um mm. basically change the law you know and, wow. and, and keep you from your rights and it, it's really common sort of like in the music business right. for non-disclosure right. agreements now, you'd be really surprised, um, mm. showbiz, the people that that you think do stuff and have their names on things aren't actually the ones that um, that really did it. And yeah, it, oftentimes yeah, exactly. it's yeah. sort of like a contractual thing, and oftentimes it's it's like you you kind of had to sign away things. So uh, you know, I mean, never trust. The people that you worship sometimes, because oh. sometimes, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's not really. I mean, that's showbiz, isn't it? Yeah, so, definitely. You know, dinner, you know, so sometimes it, it's not what you think it is. Right. And when you were working with the, like, say, when you were working with um, the guys uh, and everyone in pig face, like, how was that experience for you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it's kind of like running with weights. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you're, you're with a bunch of guys. And, uh, you know, the industrial scene isn't exactly known for being a, a real sort of uh, mm -hmm. female-friendly Sure, thing. yeah. Sure. So, uh, you know, they used to just piss me off. And... And it worked to my advantage because when, nice. when, when you're a singer in an industrial band and you're really pissed off nice. every night, mm -hmm. yes, you should be scared that I might not have had. <laughs> it was life creating art, nice, but um, yeah, yeah it's not easy, you know, oh, not easy, man. Oh, well, wow, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was just curious about that. I'm um, also. I had an, another question. Um, so you were with a band in, in a pa in the past year with a band called Techno Fear. As did I say no, that right? Interestingly enough, Techno Fear was uh, one of the first bands I was in in San Francisco. Okay. With uh, Becky from the Lonely Chicks. Uh, yeah. They, they were a, a brilliant New York foremost uh, punk band, mm -hmm. and uh, Joe Goldring from the Swans. Yes. You know. And I, I was just talking to Becky on Facebook today, and the three of us are talking about recreating a brilliant oh. song. We don't know how to We live in three different... Right. I live in London. Oh. I live in San Francisco. Like, we'll figure out, you know, maybe if we, if we can do it. But, um, sorry, I, I've just arrived all day. So I've just forgotten what I was... What was I talking about? Oh, I was asking I about uh, Technofear. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, um, it was a short-lived band. Uh, it's a really explosive band. I mean, mm. it, it was just back in the day when there was lots of, um, lot, lots of partying, lots of, lo lots of drugs, lots mm. of explosive personalities. What, what can you say? But, um, yeah, it was really short-lived. And, uh, Becky and I actually decided when, when Joe left the band, Becky and I actually decided we were going to go to England together. And we, we ended up in Belgium because there was a cheap flight to Belgium, $99, which is even, it's cheap by today's, no, it was really, it was cheap even back then, Yeah. you know, and, yeah. um, but Becky ended up joining a band in Belgium and stayed in Belgium called La Merte. And I ended up coming to London. So I've been here ever since. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. And you were talking yeah, so, about how you guys were wanting to, to yeah. sort of like re redo or maybe bring alive back an old song. Did I hear that? Or There's one song we've got called Rain, you know, and it's, uh, I recorded it on my four track Porter studio. Yeah. And it was the, the first yeah. four a track the same four track Porter studio that recorded Faith No More's first demo demo as well. Right. And Courtney loves sitting mm -hmm. on that briefly. Yes. But uh, yeah. you know, so we recorded it on my four track Porter studio and um I don't know if I can find the the actual original I was just looking for that as it happens before I talk <laughs> to you. So a little bit of synchronicity there. I mean if I can find mm -hmm. it, we'll try to remix it. Um Becky doesn't like playing to a click. And uh, she's a really, I, I don't know if you've ever seen the Luna Chicks. Oh, she's an amazing uh, One of my favorite fans. And she's a big fan. <laughs> yeah. Luna, oh, you, yeah. Seen, you, you, I haven't seen oh, them live, but you know, on YouTube. <laughs> oh, she's, she, she's such an amazing drummer. Yeah. I mean, she's just out of this world. I mean, there's, between her and Martin Atkins, Ooh, it's a close one. You know, mm -hmm. they're they're so they're sort of different, but they're two drummers that I've played with that are like some of my favorites. Nice. Well, pro probably the two favorite. I can't say that some of the other drummer friends I know might get pissed off at. Oh, no, I'll tell the truth. <laughs> we won't tell anyone. Becky <laughs> <laughs> Reck and Martin Atkins, you know, nice. two best drummers I've ever played with, and awesome. but completely different reasons because their styles couldn't be more night and day. Becky's completely all feeling, yes. and Martin's just yeah. completely all solid and control. You know, I love it. Great to, yeah. I mean, if, if you're a a really good rhythm section, you know, you don't have to do anything. You know, the job's really easy. All singers should get fired if they have good rhythm section because <laughs> hey. they, you don't have to do anything. You just stand out there and just go. Um, yeah! Yay! Um, <laughs> Johnny! Um, no. I mean, I've, I've seen shows where, like, Martin Atkins just come out and just sat on stage and played drums. It just sounded fantastic. Awesome. It's just kind of like, everybody can leave now. Yay! You know. That's awesome. That's so cool. I love it. Do you have any? Yeah! So, you're writing a book. I was wondering if you could, yes. yeah, talk about... You know how that idea came about what led to that decision and what's going to be in it okay i'll get really heavy here now because mm, yes. it's it's a deeply philosophical book yeah mm -hmm. and uh don't be put off by the title it's called a rock chick's guide to the new world order nice now it's not a conspiracy nice. theory book because the idea is that um man's nature is what creates this um huge inequality on planet earth it's this need to form like hierarchies and um celebrity worship <laughs> you know that that's just all out of proportion yeah. with reality and and also the um you know when i talked about sometimes like the unfairness that goes on yeah. in the business well you know everybody's kind of complicit in that mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. due to um our culture of sort of like um celebrity worship and putting people too much on a high pedestal and letting them get away with murder mm -hmm. you know because you, you, you get the big 
the big super uh, celebrities like uh, Michael Jackson, Madonna, whatever, uh, they're just spoiled, uh, horrible individuals, really, because they're just, you, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're kind of addicted to um, this, this sort of uh, fame thing. Mm -hmm. And, and the book is just basically about how, um, you know, in the music business, not just the music business, but just in show business in general, like in the studio systems with Harvey Weinstein, you know, and here in the UK, we had a guy called Jimmy Savile. And it's the way how um, everybody kind of allows it by, by sort of like uh, spoiling these people, letting them get away with murder. Mm. So, you know, it's kind of about that. So it's like The Rock Chick's Guide to the New World Order. It's like my experience in the music business really showed me how it works, you know, really, really showed me how the world works. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the message I'd like to put behind it is kind of a message of sort of like personal empowerment. Oh, nice. Like the only way we're going to... Oh bust this thing is you you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to stop these people from you know um consolidating right how right yeah right. you need there needs to be like a personal revolution amongst people yes to um yeah. to it will to learn to think for themselves i'm gonna talk about that a bit in my uh my song savior Oh, yeah, I was just about to you? ask you about that. Yeah, I think a lot of what you were just talking about is a lot of what I heard in your song. I've been rocking out to it recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fantastic. That's amazing. So what what kind of led to the decision to say, okay, I'm, I've had all of these experiences and now I need to actually write it down? Was there a moment uh, that was, clicked? It was a friend dying. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my wow. friend died of cancer. You know, and we had always talked about, oh, we're gonna we're gonna do this project together. We're gonna do that project together. And uh, Fran had no family, so it was um, cause her mom was like 93 and quite sick herself, and couldn't. Her mom died soon afterwards. Her, her and her sister had cancer as well. Oh no! Right, right. Oh, no. But um, we were her friends were left to sort of pick up the pieces from her life, and so when we were going through her stuff. I mean, it was just heartbreaking because on her computer, she had all these projects she didn't finish. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's amazing that you're, <laughs> yeah, you're carrying it on. Yeah, no, um, it, yeah, seeing all her unfinished things and the fact that she died quick, you know, we found out she had cancer and boom, she was gone, you know. But, um, you know, see, seeing all her unfinished projects just made me think, oh, I've got to finish every single one. It's awesome. <laughs> right? I'm not yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you have, are you writing about any of your experiences, like favorite experiences versus the un, kind of unfavorable experiences in the music business? Um, yeah, well, even the unfavorable ones are... Um, you know, probably worth, uh, you know, well, you know, it, it, it's life. I mean, yeah. it, it's experience, yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So, yeah, the favorable and unfavorable stuff, I would say. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be all doom and gloom, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. It's like life. <laughs> um, do you have another question before? Um, do you? Yeah. Well, again, yeah, <laughs> again, more about the experiences um, in music. Do you have a moment that you have just kind of one moment that keeps coming back to you from your um, experience on stage or playing? I, I, I'm not over gear sluts. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not over that. Um, mm. I've recently been reading a book by, uh, you know, Anne Frank's diary. Oh, yeah. And, oh, wow. Um, okay. This is it. And because of the lockdown and stuff, it's stuff I can relate to. Mm. And um, one thing that really got me about the book is her dad, Otto Frank. Yes. The reason why they got into that um, hiding place, yeah, was because he had good relationships with his... Um, 
with his employees. They, they adored him as a boss and his business associates and they all hit him. And, and, um, you know, I, I kind of think, you know, cause my parents have passed away and stuff that it, it's really important for me to have like friendships that I can trust. Yes. Yes. Because when you've got, when you've got, you know, solid people in your life that you can trust. It, it helps you to sleep at night, yes. you know, physiologically, it helps you to just relax in life knowing that you've got, and, um, you know, when, uh, after seven years of working on gear sluts, when, when I realized that Jules had been plotting, oh my God, <laughs> just yes. take my, he'd actually been plotting. I realized that, um, when, when I went to my sort of drawers to see where our contracts were, cause we couldn't afford lawyers. We just wrote them up my, ourselves. Mm -hmm. And our contract was missing. Oh and he was the God. only one who had a key to my flat. So, and so whoa. He, 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 he plotted it. He would actually plotted it, you know, and it was, it was my best friend, I'm so you know, sorry. and, and I'd, I'd always had this naive idea that, um, you know, I just believe, and I guess I still want to believe it yeah. that, um, yeah. you know, that people, you've got to have people you can trust in this world, you know, cause I had just been in the music business. Yeah. And so I thought, well, I want to do something with a friend, Yeah. you know? So yeah. when that happened, I'm still shaken from it. And, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. money's upsetting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, <laughs> because, um, you know, well, well, he didn't take the money cause he desperately needed it. <laughs> I mean, He's, uh, he, he, he was kind of, uh, comfortable in life. Anyway, he'd inherited money from his dad and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, mm -hmm. he, he just took the money just out of greed. Wow. I think it has a lot to do with just the male ego too. I think in an industry that's just so competitive one another, when a woman has such a great idea, you know, men are pretty quick to want to take that and mm -hmm. then call it their own and be the kings or the gods of that idea. And yeah. it's sad. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he worked, he worked very, very hard at it. But the problem is, is the thing that, um, kept the, the reoccurring theme that sort of stopped because it, I mean, it was traumatic. It actually shattered me. It kind of oh. still has, but the reoccurring theme is, um, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and the, in, the first thing that would go through my head is he thinks his time is worth everything and mine's worth nothing. He thinks his time is uh, worth everything. He oh. thinks mine's worth, and, and that was, that was uh, my thing. Like he, he's actually devalued my life so much that wow. he thinks his contribution to gear sluts was everything. Right. And mine was worth nothing. Seven years. I couldn't go on tour. I couldn't do anything because I had to watch the servers. I mean, right. it doesn't right. sound like much nowadays, you know, but back then. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah it's huge. You know, back then, hard, hardly anybody, there, there were very few people that were suicide men. I mean, you couldn't afford you couldn't afford one, so we right. couldn't have done gear sluts without me. Right, of course. You know, so, right. yeah, no, it, it's devastating. But was he, even worse was uh, he took the site. Yes. And never spoke to yeah. me again. He was such a coward. Even today. Wow. wow. Yeah, and he, he took the site. And um, the next time I even saw him again, he had two lawyers, one on either side. Whoa. <laughs> what? Real expensive lawyers. Jeez. Scared. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was like, I see him like splashing around lots of money nowadays. And I think, that's my money. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yeah, party. I hired a big boat because the guy likes to, you know, splash money around. And I thought, that's my money. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, it but be. more than more than the money, what he stole is, um, I don't trust people anymore. Oh no, he stole awful. he stole time too, which I, you know, it, we don't really see just how valuable it is until you know, we don't have that enough of is it. <laughs> And then three years of the lawsuit. Yeah. And in the middle of it, my mom died. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I begged for him to settle and he wouldn't. He just literally didn't want to give me anything. Jesus. He didn't like 
10, 10 years of my life is worth nothing. That's awful. So yeah. How did you two come to think of Gear Sluts and how did you how did you get involved in the parts that you were involved in with the website? Oh, okay. So I was on uh I was between tours in LA. I was staying in an apartment in Hollywood and um I was arguing with my record label mm -hmm. and uh you know, so we were kind of like at a stalemate. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, Jules and I uh, he was my boyfriend in in the 80s, <laughs> which is a long time ago. And, you know, we'd stay best friends. The people used to admire our friendship because oh. Oh. we'd stayed very good friends for, sure. for all these years. And uh, so we were talking on the phone, and he said, um, you know, his, his studio business was failing. He'd inherited a lot of money from his dad and uh, started a recording studio. But... Um, the guy, he just likes to show off. And he, when he does a business, he spends way more money than he needs. Yeah, so I said, Gear Sluts would have never taken off without me because I, I did everything. I did it all DIY on the cheap. Yeah. You know, so yeah. um, he, he called me and he said, oh, my studio business is failing because, um, because I'm spending all my time on this forum. <laughs> I'm spending all this uh, my time on this forum yeah. where I'm a moderator. Yeah, right. He was an unpaid moderator. Right. And uh, then the next thing, a few months later, I'm, uh, he calls me up and he says, oh, I'm bummed out. Everybody's leaving my favorite forum because oh. the owner started ch charging money. I think the site was called, what was it called? I don't think it was Pro Sound Web, Pro Audio. Uh, it's, it, it, was another, it was the biggest okay. Pro Audio web. Or gear sluts. And um, he said, well, the owner started charging money, so everybody's leaving. The owner was charging something ridiculous, like 20 bucks a month. Wow. And I said, well, I can I can do a forum. And he said, Amazing. you're kidding me. And I said, yeah, I can put up a forum. Nice. And he's like, well, what will that cost? And I said, like 10 bucks a month? You know, just for the web space. Yeah. And and um, so I put up a forum. You know, he had the name in mind. I didn't like it. But he thought, <laughs> yeah, for some reason, he liked the name. And uh, at the time, it didn't really have the connotations. Because, like, I mean, sure. I grew up in an era where they had bands called Hole and the Slits. And, yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. So, it's kind of an edgy name, so so I didn't really care. It it was really his forum, you know. I just did it for my friends because I felt bad for him, you know. Huh. And I had time, but uh, a year later, so what happened was I put up the forum, and within forty eight hours, we had the entire membership of the old forum what? because oh. the, other guy, the other guy screwed up. He started charging money, and uh, you know everybody came instantly. The whole membership. Within wow. 48 hours. That's that amazing. Is crazy. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, Jules, Jules had it thrown in his lap. You know, he had it thrown in his lap. He was lucky enough to have a friend. And you couldn't find somebody that would do you a forum back then for free. Because, um, I mean, it, it wasn't like nowadays where everybody's got Facebook pages and stuff. Yeah. So, he, he just had yeah. it thrown in his lap. And um, so, it just kept growing and growing. And I'm like, this thing's growing. This, this is hard to run. And, uh, you know, finally we needed to get, like, uh, our own dedicated machine and stuff. And, and Jules said, look, you know, let's go into business. Let's sell advertising to keep this going. You know, we'll split it 50-50, you know. Oh. And I was like, Whoa. okay. Mm -hmm. I, I thought, well, see, I had always promised yeah. my mom that if I started to get old and I wasn't making money in the music business, I said, look, you know, I'm smart. I, I, I promised her that I'd do something else. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is a good way to do it. So Jules offered me 50-50, and I said, well, I don't want 50-50 because I don't I want to get back to music. I'm a musician, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, but I'll have to get this going. And he said, well, I'll give you, if you help me get it going, I'll give you a third share for the rest of your life. You know, you just take off a couple of years, you know, from the music business, and, and you can have an ongoing royalty for you know, starting this thing for me, you know? So um, I said, okay, that's what I'll do. Yeah. 
but it wasn't a couple yeah. of years. It was seven years later. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and he's he well, I can't say that he's told the contract, but nobody knew where uh, else he was, and nobody yeah. else had access. It's pretty suspicious. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Fair. And so, but by then, I figured it out that uh, it, at that point, he'd also gotten married. And his wife wasn't thrilled oh, about no. him being his ex. She liked the money, but she wasn't thrilled. So, uh, you know, he, he, you know, when when I I, I started to get nervous, like uh, I'm, gonna, you know, we should form an LLC. I want yeah. this more solidified. Yeah. Right. He kept avoiding, yeah. it, avoiding oh. it, and then uh, finally on fe- what day was it? Fe- I've got it written down. I, I'd gone to bed at about 11 in the morning and I'd slept the two up because I was uh, setting up some new servers because we were always expanding. And, um, you know, the next thing you know, the, uh, you know, at, at 1 a.m., 1 p.m., I woke up after sleep in two hours and I tried logging into all the servers. And I, oh. I, I thought it was a boss attacker and I couldn't get in. Oh, and then I tried to get into our accounts, like our bank accounts. And, all, oh. and I couldn't get into anything. Wow. And I tried calling all day and calling and calling and saying, we're under attack. We're, wow. And I wouldn't get any help. He wouldn't, he, he just wouldn't talk to me again. It was just it. He just <sighs> went, boom. And then uh, it was too cowardly to even mm-hmm. face me again. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. yeah. That is insane. That's crazy. That's awful. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> He, he'd learned that trick from the music business because mm. in the music they know very well that you know in any other business it's pretty straightforward you give somebody a service they pay you you know it's pretty straightforward but in the music business it's based on leverage so you give somebody a service they're supposed to pay you they only pay you if they want like your next record yeah yeah so yeah. You know, I I think it was a sort of trick that he learned off the music business, but uh, so shady. I don't know. You know, he 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 must have just convinced himself. Um, I don't know. Is it some kind of weird dynamic with his wife? Um, you know, where where they sort of plotted. Uh, she, she didn't like him being in business with his ex. Right. But that's so unfair to you, and especially in the the history of Gear Sluts for for your name and your work to not be as recognized, especially by the public. You know your place in history um, yeah. to be overshadowed. And, and basically, it was like a friend of his gave him a site. Mm-hmm. He got lucky, right? Because um, yeah. you know you, you you couldn't get that kind of membership overnight nowadays because right. nowadays you have to pay. Yeah to um, get people to, you know, onto your website and mm. stuff. And he just had handed it to him on a plate. Mm. I really admire how you came forward after the petition to change the name of Gear Sluts was circulating. And that was really inspiring to me to, to actually understand the story and see where you were coming from and your place with the website too. Um, how, how was that? coming forward how did that kind of what motivated you to really speak on that when the petition was circulating I thought <laughs> great <laughs> so people need to hear the story yes yeah because uh, um you know, it, it's so much showbiz showbiz is so much uh an illusion mm-hmm. you know this guy that, that this idea that like julian started uh gear sluts and he's this entrepreneur and stuff no he's this guy that had a loyal friend yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely you know <laughs> and it's just really saddening because it's another example of women's erasure and in there, especially in audio and in tech, which is so male dominated. I think that's even worse to hear about because there are so few women to really uh, to know about, but to also inspire and look up to. I think that's really awful. Yeah, no, I absolutely. Um, and especially 
what's especially important is um, this issue of your time. Yes. Yeah. Not being with as much. I mean, that's a big, big deal. And um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of extreme. You know, in my case, we're talking seven years plus three years for the lawsuit, so ten years. All that time. Oh my God. You know, it's just crazy, and it's sort of like, 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 um, like my mom didn't have dreams for me. You had to do this so that you could take all the credit and all the money and da da da. And you don't think my mom had dreams for me too? Mm. Like you, you, you're. It's uh, I, I don't know. It, it's too, it's too easy to think that I suppose, and. Uh, I mean, I, I suppose part of it is um, I, I think we as women are kind of like that. But, you know, I don't think we should have to be like men. You right. know, I don't think we should have to be like uh, ruthless. And right. I mean, mm-hmm. like some, some people would hear my story and some of the guys might actually sort of admire Jules. Hey, nice one. Smart, biz, clever business guy. He tricked her, you know. <laughs> I, you know, and, and there are people like that that would actually oh, admire. Oh yes, there are. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. The one that's successful, mm-hmm. you know. And I mean, that that's a problem. Yes. It so is. yeah, I think sometimes like women kind of think, well, we gotta kind of be like them, you know. We gotta be tough. We gotta be, and no, I think it's. It's the opposite. I mean, we've got to kind of civilize the men. <laughs> Make them be civilized. We don't have to go to their level. You know, we need to, you know, we need to get them to behave. <laughs> basically. I love it. I mean, you make a, an it. incredibly good point because, we, you know, as musicians, we're in such a very, very male-dominated industry. Mm-hmm. And I myself work in a very, very male dominated industry. I work as a small engine mechanic. So what you say really rings true. Um, and I felt like for such a long time, I did the same thing. I really had to put myself on their level mm-hmm. when it really, I just felt like I wasn't being super true to myself. Sorry, it's cutting off. Oh, uh, I was just, uh, can you hear, can you hear all right? I'm missing the small engine mechanic bit. Yeah. Okay. I think it's coming back. Coming back? The, the small engine mechanic. Yeah. Yes. I think, hello. Can, can you hear me? Hear me? Are you... Yeah. Can you hear us all right? The small and yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, the small mechanic bit cut off a bit, but uh, if you just start from there. Um. Right. Yeah, I was just saying that because uh, I work as a small engine mechanic and and a male a dominated industry, and it's definitely I certainly feel like it feels that way. It's I definitely feel like I have to kind of put myself more on their level. And it's, it's a really tough feeling to feel because it's almost like you feel obligated to have to earn their respect when it really should just, you know, like, like you said, like we should be teaching them to be more like well-mannered rather than having to get on their level (laughs) to be able to earn that, you know, respect and be treated, you know, mutually as a, you know, a friend or a coworker or whatnot, but it shouldn't be that way. And I, and I don't, sometimes I didn't really see that and I even just you saying that now i'm like man that makes so much sense yes, it, does. it really <laughs> it's does. true it's kind of admitting you know it, it's kind of admitting that their way of doing things is somehow uh better mm-hmm. right yes you know? mm-hmm. absolutely but, but it's not I, I was in an all-girl band and it was like the best band i was in in my life yeah you know mm-hmm. yeah. Not, you know that the, the cliches about uh women uh they, they're all oh i mean not, not always wrong but mo- most of the time you know not as much as people would think yeah you know yeah. so uh yeah yeah I mean, that that's the problem and um mm-hmm. i mean that that's what i would say to young women is uh you know don't 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 allow them to make you play by their rules yes you know? nice. yeah. we, I don't know if you've heard my song, And God, She Created Civilization. Well, that's what it's about. You know, you apes ain't going to make it just swinging in the trees. You better learn to walk upright before she brings you to your knees. Yes. I love it. It seems like, you know, woman is the civilizing force, you know. So I think, you know, 
it's all about uh, taking power in a female way yep. rather than uh, play. We're always going to lose if we play by their rules. Exactly. <laughs> you know? They make up the rules. Yeah, <laughs> I totally agree. And I think there's there's something to be said, too, about earning respect. Like Johnny was saying, there there's a feeling, especially walking into a studio, of already needing to earn the respect of the engineers mm-hmm. and everyone that's there instead of seeing ourselves as equals which is which is a big reason why we decided to sort of do the same thing like we decided to take matters into our own hands because we had been in so like too many situations where we've had um, male engineers really make us feel you know very demeaned and very overlooked and Mm -hmm. um, we had another engineer that we tried to work with who I felt like really wanted to control what we were doing. And also he was just very inappropriate with some of us. And, mm-hmm. you know, it just wasn't a good look on him. And it, and it really hurt him too in the end. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, it was just bad. So after all those experiences, I we were all sitting together in our little jam room and stuff. And I thought, I'm like, you know, we can do this ourselves. And we need to, yeah, yeah we got to just start doing it ourselves. I'm like, how inspiring, how empowering that we can be to other women to do, to do this, what we're doing. Yeah, I, th- I think it's the only way, really. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And I want to say to you, your story and coming forward inspired me so much that I mean, I kind of ran out and and tried to get the domain for Gear Fanatics, which is going to be completely women-owned and yes. operated. Yes. <laughs> and with um, our engineer friend, Lillian Blair, it's going to have forums and really highlighting the voices of underrepresented people in audio. Excellent. <laughs> that sounds perfect. Awesome. Sounds wonderful. Hi. Nice. Do you have another question? Yeah, it's been it's been a pretty cool experience, and I'm really glad that we were talking to you because um, I didn't really understand what was going on until I started to see the name of the um, uh, the forum and the website circulate, and I was just you know I didn't hear about it until Angie had sort of introduced me to it, and and then that's when your name came up. I was like, wait, by Meg Lee Chin, like the Meg Lee Chin? <laughs> All right, we got to figure out what's going on. You know, it wasn't just about the name, but it was everything else that was you know surrounding the story and. So I'm glad that we can sit here with you and really get set the record straight, mm-hmm. you know. And yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Well, well, thanks for having me. So thank you so it's been much. A pleasure. Such a pleasure. It's such such an a honor pleasure. To speak yes. With you and definitely keep us updated on the progress of the book. And we would love to, yeah, just to keep in touch. We are so inspired by you and your work and your art and your voice. And thank you so much for, for talking with us. You know, we're really inspired by you guys as well. Oh, no. And you know, with Gear Fanatics, take it over. Yes. Oh, yay. <laughs> yay. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Meg. I, for for everything, I truly is just an artist meeting you as a person. You just seem so humble. I'm really excited. We got to I got to learn more background about you, and um, I have one other question. Um, the your song thing. What was that written? What was what was this? What's the story behind that that song? Um, Not that I some of my songs I guess have a, a lot of meaning behind it, but um that that was just kind of uh sorta, of, you know, something spontaneous. Awesome. You know, so I've got a story behind that sometime, but I'll tell you another day. Yes, oh, definitely. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you again Can't so wait. so much. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> bye bye. Bye Meg. See you. Bye bye. Bye. Oh my God. She's so cool. She's so sweet. Awesome. Okay, I got it recorded. She's so humble. Like. Oh my God, that was so much fun. Holy smokes. <laughs>